In this Diablo 4 video, I'm going to be showing you my Bloodburst Necromancer build. This is a beginner Necromancer build that focuses on the use of blood skills such as Blood Surge and Hemorrhage, and is aimed at World Tiers 1 and 2 and is sort of a leveling Necromancer build. The general strategy for this build is to start off by attacking enemies with Bone Spear and then alternating with Blood Surge. This may seem counterintuitive, especially since both of these are core skills that make use of Essence, however this is the best combination when it comes to dealing massive single target and AoE burst damage. With Blood Surge, you'll be able to deal huge explosion damage and drain the target's blood to increase your health. Doing so will consistently keep you alive in combat regardless of the type of foes you face. Next, you'll be activating Hemorrhage to reduce the damage you take. But more importantly, it'll let you generate a decent amount of essence and form blood orbs to restore HP. For elites and bosses, you'll be triggering Blood Wave, which is your ultimate skill to deal decent burst damage, and you'll also be relying on your skeletons. You're not taking the standard route where you use Golem to taunt enemies on your behalf, instead the skeletons will generate enough essence and help deal considerable damage. Those things being said, let's jump into the skills. First is Bone Spear. Bone Spear is a very useful core skill due to the huge amount of damage you deal against multiple enemies in combination with Enhanced Bone Spear. The spear not only pierces through targets from any distance, but deals additional damage with its shrapnel breaks. Since you're going to need a reliable source of single target damage, you're better off investing all 5 points into Bone Spear for this build compared to Sever. Although you're going to consume less essence with Sever, the damage you deal with Bone Spear will be considerably larger, allowing you to slay enemies in a matter of seconds. Once you can, you'll want to upgrade this to the Supernatural Bone Spear Morph, which lets you apply Vulnerable against the first enemy you hit with Bone Spear. This is especially effective against bosses and elites as you make them vulnerable, which amplifies the damage you and your minions deal by at least 20%. Since this is one of your major skills, you'll want to finish the Black Asylum Dungeon and Fractured Peaks to obtain the Aspect of Torment. This will significantly raise your Essence Regeneration every time you land crits using Bone Spear. And remember, to also be on the lookout for gear with Critical Strike Chance and Critical Strike Damage as well. Next we have Blood Surge. Blood Surge is an amazing offensive and defensive core skill rolled into one. Blood Surge makes it so that you get to steal the life of enemies while dealing explosive AoE Blood Nova damage. The more blood you drain, the greater damage you'll inflict, so it's very effective against mobs. For upgrades, you'll want to invest in Enhanced Blood Surge and Paranormal Blood Surge. Enhanced Blood Surge converts the blood you've stolen to heal a portion of your maximum life. Again, using Blood Surge repeatedly will replenish more health. Paranormal Blood Surge allows you to gain at most 5 stacks of overwhelming blood as long as enemies are damaged by Blood Surge while you're healthy or above 80%. Once you hit the 5 stack threshold, the next time Blood Surge is triggered, it becomes overpowered, so you get to deal huge damage that scales with the sum of your current health and fortified life, as well as your overpowered damage modifier. This is huge and will often obliterate multiple enemies on the screen in a split second. The aspect that goes exceptionally well with Blood Surge is the Blood Bathed aspect. You can acquire this by completing the Hoarfrost Demise Dungeon in Fractured Peaks. It basically lets you deal another Nova Explosion for free from Blood Surge to inflict additional damage. At level 25, and given that you'll heavily make use of two core skills, it's best to allocate one point into Unliving Energy, and then two points into Imperfectly Balanced. The Unliving Energy passive provides you with a bit of essence, but more importantly, you'll want to gain access to Imperfectly Balanced to be able to do greater damage with Bone Spear and Blood Surge. Despite the higher essence cost, the damage you deal will be significantly increased, making Imperfectly Balanced worth it. When you have enough points, you'll be able to max out this passive. Up next, we have Hemorrhage. Since you have two skills that make use of Essence in this build, you'll need to have enough of this resource to trigger them at the right times. By default, Hemorrhage generates the highest Essence among the basic skills of the Necromancer, in addition to dealing some damage and potentially forming a Blood Orb. These are then used to restore your health. With Enhanced Hemorrhage, every time you pick up a Blood Orb, you gain Essence. The first upgrade you'll want to invest in is Initiate's Hemorrhage. This grants Fortify when you attack an enemy so you take lower damage. Additionally, remember that Hemorrhage is a close-range skill, so you'll need to go head-to-head -to -head against your target to reap its benefits. Up next, we have Blood Mist. Blood Mist is your go-to macabre skill that will save you in harmful situations by granting you immunity when you find yourself desperately needing it. Once activated, you'll lose access to your skills, but your movement speed will be reduced, but you can momentarily escape the fight and take a breather. Next, you'll want to invest in Enhanced Blood Mist to notably reduce Blood Mist's cooldown every time Blood Search is used, followed by Dreadful Blood Mist to raise Fortify. And then we come to Blood Wave. Blood Wave is your ultimate skill that you're going to use against bosses and elites. That not only lets you deal huge burst damage in the form of a wave, but it also pushes targets back away from you. You want to make sure that you unlock the Prime Blood Wave for now, it slows down enemies, but when you have enough points starting at level 26 or onward, 
you'll be able to unlock Supreme Blood Wave to gain more blood orbs which you can be used to heal yourself. Blood Wave is a decent and straightforward skill to tackle pesky and strong enemies alike. Moving on to the minions, let's take a look at the Book of the Dead. As early as level 15, the Necromancer will gain access to the Book of the Dead, which will allow them to raise different types of minions. You'll be making use of Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Mages because they're going to be more effective in the long run compared to just the Golem. Since you'll be sacrificing the Golem, make sure to choose the third node of the Blood Form to further increase your maximum life. Since you can maintain full HP the majority of the time, this bonus will allow you to deal massive damage with Blood Surge's overpower. For Skeletal Warriors, you'll be picking up the second node of the Reaper Form in order to create corpses. Even though you're not going to be using Corpse Explosion, it'll still be beneficial to have corpses on the ground to make use of the Ray Skeleton skill in order to heal these minions while boosting their damage. This is essential against bosses where usually fewer corpses are available. For Skeletal Mages, you'll be selecting the first node of the Cold Version. This lets you gain two Essence every time mages hit enemies with their primary attack. They also have a high chance of freezing them, allowing all of you to swiftly swoop in and kill enemies. Final tips. Bonuses you want to be on the lookout for are Intelligence for extra skill damage, Core skill damage, plus one rank to Bone Spear or plus two ranks, and plus ranks to Blood Surge and damage to close enemies. Vulnerable damage bonus is also very good when using Bone Spear. Essence cost reduction will also be a huge plus, as you'll be able to trigger Bone Spear and Blood Surge more frequently. Note that you shouldn't focus too heavily on your gear while you're leveling up at the early stages of the game, because you will swap it out regularly, but these are the bonuses that you should be looking for. Just make sure that you, you know, are not trying to get them perfect and min-maxing them, etc. at this stage of the game. Passives you want to invest in eventually are Coalesced Blood, Tides of Blood, Transfusion, and Skeletal Warrior Mastery later on. More often than not, your character will remain healthy, which is why you'll be needing Coalesced Blood. Because of this, you'll be able to deal great damage with Hemorrhage, Blood Surge, and Blood Wave. Tides of Blood goes well here since it boosts the overpower damage dealt by Blood Surge and even doubles it when you maintain being healthy. Transfusion will heal your minions with Blood Orbs to improve their survivability, and lastly, Skeletal Mastery will improve your warrior's damage and life. Legendary aspects you want to be on the lookout for at higher levels are Blood Getter's Aspect, Vicious Aspect, and Blood Soaked Aspect. The Blood Getter's Aspect and Vicious Aspects increase the number of Skeletal Warriors and Mages you summon respectively. The more of them you have on the battlefield, the faster you'll eliminate enemies. The Blood Soaked Aspect makes it so upon activating Blood Mist, you can move at your normal speed and leave a trail that deals shadow damage over time. Lastly, you'll want to chase after the Splintering Aspect later on that lets you apply Vulnerable to other targets that you hit with Bone Spear. Remember to slot this on a two-handed weapon to increase its power by 100%. You can obtain the Splintering Aspect by progressing further in the Dry Steps campaign. That wraps up the Bloodburst Necromancer beginner build. I hope you guys found this helpful. We have other Necromancer builds as well as other beginner builds for other classes as well. Let me know what you thought of this build in the comments below, and if you have questions, I will try and answer them.